Good morning, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott, and I'm the senior strategist for WealthPress. And today is Thursday, December 1st. 11 months are over. This is the last month of the year. This gives us an opportunity to make some upside gains over the next 30 days or some downside gains over the last 30 days. Now, the market went completely and totally against what I thought it was going to do yesterday. Um, and one of the reasons, and I was reading this and I was actually talking to a, uh, a friend of mine who's, uh, who used to be a hedge fund manager, and he was telling me that there's a lot of uh, funds who got caught yesterday taking uh, covering their shorts. So a lot of what we saw yesterday was short covering. It was not actual buying. Um, but with that said, the sentiment has not changed, folks. And Fed raising rates 0.5 instead of 0.75 is still double, not triple, but double what they're usually doing. So if you're expecting, uh, you know, rainbows and butterflies and uh, and 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 this thing to come to an end, I gotta I gotta be honest with you. We're just not there yet. And and I'm gonna say something. I'm, I'm usually bullish about 85% of the time. I'm not a bear. Um, it takes me a while to get a little bearish, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you as I sit here right now, this market is not ready to go up in a sustainable way, and I'm gonna show you why. Now, typically, typically, uh, and by the way, we're up about, uh, we're, we're up just a little bit kind of following through last night. I wouldn't make too much of this, and I am expecting a turnaround to the downside. Remember, we were just down 550 points just a few days ago. So this this volatility and this craziness is not over just yet. Now, I want you guys to see something interesting. This is a chart of the S&P 500 right here. And last time when we were right here, right at this area right here, the number of stocks, the number of stocks making 20-day breakouts was about 550. And the number of stocks making 20-day breakdowns was about 20. We're at 472 right now. Another day, maybe two of this type of pressure, and this market will be overdone, just way, way overdone. Other things that are telling me the same story, the same song and dance. This is the Dow Jones. This is the number of stocks in the Dow trading above the 50-day moving average. We are now not at one of the highest levels. We are now at the second highest level only, only to what we saw in March of 2016. Now, this is max. I'm going max. I can't go further. If I go 20 years, which will just do the same thing, it'll just take away this. Basically, this starts, the data is only available from 2017, 2007. So you've got about 15, 16 years of data here. This is the second highest momentum reading in a bearish market while the Dow is still, or most stocks are still below the 200-day moving average, when the number of stocks trading above the 50-day moving average is at 95th percentile. Now, I know you're thinking, well, Roger, it's the Dow. There's only 30 stocks in there. I hear you. I hear you. Look at the S&P. The S&P, this is the highest level. Let's see. This is the second highest level since our bounce back from COVID. We haven't gotten higher. In, in, and again, I'm, look, I'm not like showing short term. I'm going back to 2007. Look at that. So, so to think that we're still below the 200. And, and how about the NASDAQ 100? This is the NASDAQ 100. It just doesn't go up here very much. And the NASDAQ 100 is not all that bullish right now. Matter of fact, if you look at the NASDAQ 100, you will see that only, only 54% of stocks are trading above the 200-day moving average. 85 versus 54, mm -mm, no, no. That's not, that's not meaningful, that's not sustainable. And look at this, real estate communication services, 26%, 36%. Folks, this is not a sustainable, um, a sustainable rally, especially with the 50-day lines like this, 92%, 91%, 97%, 96%, 95%, 100%. It's too much. It cannot sustain itself. Also, I think that we're going to start seeing bond market turning a little bit south. I think this is too much upside, and uh, I think they're getting a little bit overbought, and that's also going to put pressure on the market. I'm actually considering uh, selling bonds near the current level right now. Now, let's talk a little bit about global economy and what to expect. But again, in the short term, folks, in the long term, I'm, I'm, I'm neutral. But in the short term, folks, this market is way overdone. And anybody who wants to go long right now is just going to get suckered into a false sense of security and a false rally. 
uh, momentum levels, especially long-term momentum levels, they hardly ever, ever lie. And by the way, volatility, with the market going up yesterday, 700-something uh, points, it didn't come off. It did not come off. Volatility was flat yesterday. So the fact that volatility is flat, the fact that volatility is near the lower levels, the fact that Fed is still raising rates a lot, and we still have a lot of Fed data before this is over. Um, I'm not uh, going to recommend anybody consider this to be the beginning of a bull market. I think this is a classic, classic bear market rally that's trying to sucker in the weak hands before taking us down really, really hard. And unfortunately, about 85 to 95 percent of everything I'm looking at is confirming that. Now, three major U.S. benchmark indices finished the regular session higher, a lot higher. After Mr. Jerome, I won't be honest with you till I get reappointed. And then maybe, wink, wink, he signaled that the central banks might scale back the pace of its interest rate hikes as soon as December. Well, that's great. So we're going to go, you're saying we're going to raise rates double, not triple the normal level? And the market's happy about that? No, no, folks. Power acknowledged that the rates were approaching the level of restraint that will be sufficient to bring down inflation. Remember I said lag? He wants to consider the lag. That was a big, big red flag. I mean, a green flag that he was going to go this route. However, the Fed chair added that the fight against inflation was far from over and that rates were still a long way from peak levels. I, I don't know how to explain this to you guys. Maybe we're not reading the same language or something. But with that announcement, remember what I said, it's going to influence the, the basis of interest rate hikes and, and, and so forth. So now, now they're looking at a... Um, a 0.50 rate hike at 79%. I think it was at 70% yesterday. And 7.5 at 20%. It was at 30% yesterday. Now, I expect this number to start moving lower once again and this number to move higher once again. Today, we're going to get data on private employment. Um, actually, excuse me, yesterday, we got data on private employment, ADP, and it was awful. It showed that uh, employers are adding uh, 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 jobs at a very, very slow rate rate indicating cooling labor demand and higher interest rates not a bull market climate another reading revealed that u.s economic growth was higher than expected in the third quarter that's the gdp but but again most of the other numbers were not great and the expectations on the gdp were pulled down quite a bit today we're going to be focused on the pce price index um, we're looking at october pc index to stand at 0.3 positive over, over month over month and 5% year over year. Investors are going to be looking at ISM manufacturing PMI. We're looking at 50.2. Manufacturing PMI was reported, um, the U.S. manufacturing PMI, sorry, uh, foresee this figure standing at 47.6 in November compared to 50.4. Personal spending will come out today. They're expecting the figure for the month to be up 0.8%. Um, not really considering month over month what I am looking at the jobless claims that will be reported today and this number has been fairly solid as long as it stays 200 250 we're going to be okay on that front in China China closed higher in hopes for a full reopening don't hold your breath it's only been what two years now investor sentiment toward China was improved by the scaling back of some anti-covid restrictions after a series of protests against the government zero covid measures Thursday, factory activity shrank in November in China, underlying the deepening economic cracks in the country. And Japan's Nikkei closed higher, supported by stronger than expected capital spending. Now, let's talk a little bit about our market. As I mentioned earlier, we have 472 stocks making 20-day breakouts. And the last time we saw something like that near that level, when we were going higher, I'll show you where that was. It was right here. It was right here, right at this level, right here, right before we peaked out. And then we went down here, we were at like 500, 600 to the downside. And right now we're approaching overbought levels again. And folks, I'm going to tell you right now, the s and above the 200 day moving average. I'm not expecting it to hold there. Uh, the Russell is above the 200 day moving average. I'm not expecting it to hold there. Looking at each individual sectors, which we will look at right now. Oops, sorry. Nothing really has changed. You still have energy, you still have industrial, you still have financial. 
uh, healthcare, basic materials, consumer staples. Though that's where the your most of your energy should be focused on. Stay away from technology. Utilities, I think, will start coming back up. Uh, real estate is is a dog right now. Communication services is a dog. Consumer discretionary is a dog. Energy still moving choppy. Industrial is finally breaking out. Financial is breaking out because of positive economic news. Healthcare is breaking out. Uh, utilities, I like the utilities breakout. Technology breakout, which this thing is going to fade so fast. I like the consumer staples. Everything looks positive, but I'm telling you right now, these are overbought sectors, and I'm not. I'm not expecting major upside in the near term. Now, today is Thursday, and on Thursday, what do I do? I always give you the top sector, um, and I'll do that today. I am still, I am still, especially right now with what I'm seeing, I like the energy sector, and uh, I think the energy sector is going to go higher. I think this is just a simple pullback. Um, I'm seeing more upside from the energy sector, and um, in terms of options, I would be looking at I would be looking at the February expiration, and I would be looking at a strike price of right around 93, maybe 94. I think you can get a lot of uh, upside from this, and I think energy is a good, good, good way to go. I would be careful with other sectors, especially right now. And uh, as you could see right here, we've got a lot of, let me just pull this up. Got a lot of economic data today coming out before 10 o'clock, and I think the market is crazy overbought. We've got the employment report tomorrow. According to uh, uh, yesterday's ADP report, let me just show you this. You got to see this. They were expecting 200,000. They got 127. And tomorrow, tomorrow is the government report, not ADP. And I'm telling you right now, I like the fact that this market's going higher, but folks, this is not sustainable. And remember, XLE is, is, is my favorite uh, ETF. If I was to go for a second one, Believe it or not, but I would actually go for utilities right now. I think utilities have more upside, and I think they could possibly hit the 75 level. Be careful with real estate. Be careful with communication services. Be, caref be careful with consumer discretionary. Uh, th the long-term trend, the bulls are not your friend right now. Now, folks, we're now in December. And 2023 is literally, literally around the corner. Now, if you've been considering changing up your tra trading or trying a new strategy, man, this is a great time to join me today at 1 p.m. Eastern time. I'm hosting a special, very, very special year-end training that I'll go over, 10 core lessons of high probability trading, five patterns that you need to memorize. Literally, you need to memorize. We'll cover the basics of some of the best performing strategies that, that have been working well in 2022 bear market and a special surprise for anyone that attends. And I advise you not to go into 2023 market without seeing this lesson. And if you want to switch up your trading next year or add a cool tool to your trading toolbox, this is the way to go. You're going to love, love, love today's special surprise. Follow the link. Check it out. If you're in the YouTube channel, it's in the Wealth Press YouTube channel below the video. I want you to like us, subscribe to us and post comments in the YouTube channel or email me support at marketgeeks.com and I will respond to you. Yes, I will. Have a great day and don't let Powell continue to fool you. First, he was fooling us to the downside and now he's fooling us to the upside. But the market is the one that's going to be honest here and uh, the market's going to show Powell that this market is not ready to go higher. And uh, we may, we may be, uh, we may want to sell bonds a little later today as well. Hope that helps. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great day. And remember, don't let this market manipulate you. We're not ready to go higher just yet. And that's the, tr the God's honest truth. Bye, guys. Take care. Have a great, great day.